A lot of people uh, fly the FreeSky D4R2 receiver on their um, multi-rotors, and it is a good receiver. It's small. It does CPPM out. It has uh, analog RSSI out, etc., etc. There's a lot to recommend it. Um, but some people have started switching over to the X4R receiver with SBUS. And the argument that they make is that the SBUS receiver has less latency and that they can feel the difference. And other people say, that's, that's really ridiculous. You can't feel the difference. You're imagining it. And I want to talk to you about why I think that's wrong and why I think that you can, in fact, feel the difference. What people commonly say is that the CP, CPPM receiver has, uh, well, depending on which FreeSky firmware you're running, between 18 and 27 milliseconds of, of frame size. And therefore, they say there's 18 to 27 milliseconds of latency on CPPM, whereas the SBUS receiver has a 9 millisecond frame size. If, if my research is correct, it's around 9 milliseconds, maybe 10 milliseconds. I don't know. Uh, and they say there's just no way you're going to feel the difference. Yeah, okay, fine. It is one third. It's three times as fast. But there's still no way you can feel the difference between 18 and 27 milliseconds and 9 milliseconds. That's a, a, a difference of between 9 and 18 milliseconds. Nobody's response time is that fast that you that you would really like, oh, night and people talk about it like it's a night and day difference. But there's more to the picture. And I've got that sort of laid out here. So with CPPM is an analog protocol, uh, which means that there can be glitches, right? And the way that you deal with the glitches in clean flight anyway, is that clean flight does three frame averaging of the signal. So that if the signal is coming in and there's a little bit of a glitch, the averaging will smooth out the glitch, right? So that means for clean flight, we don't have 18 to 27 millisecond of latency on the input. We have between 54 and 81 milliseconds of latency. So already you're in a very different situation, a very different paradigm. And that three frame averaging alone, uh, everybody seen, well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people seem to miss that one when they're having this discussion. Then if you're running beta flight and you have RC smoothing turned on, that is a feature that Boris added to do a low pass filter on the RC input. And the idea is that there's some D term spikes because of the stair step nature of the RC input and RC smoothing gets rid of that. RC smoothing uh, adds one loops worth of latency. So it has to store the data and average it or whatever it does. It adds one loop's worth of latency, which means it's doubling this number if you're running RC smoothing. And by the way, I know RC smoothing is in beta flight. It may also have been put in clean flight 110 or 111. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I didn't fly beta flight. So you may or may not have this. But if you have RC smoothing turned on, you've gone from 54 to 81 to 108 to 162. Okay. Now, if we look at SBUS, on the other hand, SBUS has a 9 millisecond frame size. There's no need for averaging because SBUS is a digital protocol. It's got checksums. So if there's bad data, you just immediately know and you can discard the data and keep going. So we have a 9 millisecond frame size. That means there's 9 milliseconds of latency because there's no averaging. And if you're using RC smoothing, it'll double that to 18 milliseconds. So without RC smoothing, the, the correct comparison to make is between 9 milliseconds and 54 to 81 milliseconds. And I think you'll agree that that is probably a difference that you could feel in flight. It's a difference of uh, roughly 45, 45 to uh, roughly uh, 72 milliseconds, if I've done my math correctly in my head, which I don't always do. A difference of 45 to 72 milliseconds. Uh, I think a typical response time, like my response time, if I do, you know, just click the mouse as fast as you see the light change, I'm usually in the range of 0.2 to 0.25 seconds. I'm not a particularly, you know, twitchy guy with a with a twitchy. You could I could imagine some young person with very fast responses being faster than that, and maybe some older people or slower people being a little slower. But I think a, a good response time for a human is is in the range of around 0.2 to 0.25 seconds. And I think you'll agree that if you've ever played uh, first person shooters or any kind of online gaming that when you get lag in a range of 70 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, it starts to become an issue if you're playing a, a real-time game, which FPV flight certainly is. So there's a, it's a big difference here. SBUS, you're at 9 milliseconds without RC smoothing or 18 milliseconds with. CPPM, you're at 54 to 81 milliseconds without RC smoothing and 108 to 162. Oof, even worse, with. 
Can you feel the difference? Yes, I think you definitely can. Now, so why are these pilots going to SBUS, right? Does it really matter? And I think it does. If you watch, uh, if you watch the flight test, uh, hang on, I'll pull the video up. Hang on, I'm going to pause this, I'll pull it up. Okay, I found the video. Yay, yay me. Um, this video is one where Josh Bixler from Flight Test, he usually flies FPV with a GoPro, and he flies with a board camera for the first time, and feels what a difference the latency makes. And the interesting thing is he never noticed before, right? And and so latency in your in your control link and your video link is this thing where when it's present, you, you're flying and you don't think, oh my gosh, my link is slow. But you think, wow, I'm really flying bad. I'm a bad pilot. I can't hit my lines. I'm always crashing into trees. And then you fly with a latency reduced and suddenly, all of a sudden, you notice, oh, it's so much better. The copter's doing what I want it to do. It's going where I want it to go. And obviously, there's a point of diminishing returns there. Will you feel the difference between 9 milliseconds latency and 1 millisecond latency? Pro probably not. But will you feel the difference between 70 to 100 milliseconds latency and 9 milliseconds latency? Yes, I think you definitely will. Uh, so, what's the takeaway here? Um, I think that, uh, you know, if you really want to get serious about proximity flying, the X4R is the winner over the D4R. And I think you see that most of the pros nowadays have made that transition uh, and, uh, and have figured that out, that that really matters. Um, if all you do is you fly in open fields, you know, I think one reason why Josh Bixler never noticed this before is that most of the flying he does is in a big open field. He's doing camera work where he's flying around a, a, like a plane that they're doing a review of or something. And in those scenarios, the low latency is not as important. Uh, because you you just don't have as much to crash into. <laughs> but if you're doing proximity acro, it's very important to have low latency because you can have very short reaction time before you need to make control inputs to to do the the moves that you need to do to miss a tree or fly over a tree very close, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, so uh, that's that's my uh, take on the whole S bus versus CPPM. I think you can feel the difference, and here's why. And, uh, you know, I think this is a reason why the X-Series receiver, uh, I, I'm, I'm moving to the X-Series receiver. I'm not going to be installing any more D-Series receivers in my copters. Uh, the price difference is basically negligible. The only downside there is that if you're going to do S-Bus, you're going to have a little bit of a hard time with an F1 board. You're going to need either like the NAS Rev 6 supports inversion natively and can do S-Bus. Whereas the other uh, F1 boards typically don't do inversion and you need to get an inverter cable. Uh, it's like three bucks from Hobby King, so it's not too big a deal. But um, don't worry about the latency of the inverter cable. The latency of the inverter cable is in the tens, tens of nanoseconds. So it's super fast. It's not going to add any latency. It's not even worth worrying about. But um, if you have an F1 board, you won't be able to just feed SBUS right into it without an inverter. Uh, unfortunately, unless you have a Rev 6. NAS Rev 6 has an inverter built in. I don't think any other F1 boards do. All of the F3 boards support SBUS inversion natively. You can just plug it right in. The other disadvantage of SBUS is that you, um, you may not have enough UARTs. You need a hardware UART to do SBUS. So on a NAS, uh, you only have two hardware UARTs. And, uh, you know, so you're going to probably need to dedicate one. One of them is used for MSP for your for your configurator, and so you're basically going to have to use the other one for SBUS, and that's just it. So you really are running out of UARTs on an F1 board. So if you're going to do uh, SBUS, it, it's I still run F1 boards, I still run NASES in my copters, but uh, an F3 board will definitely simplify your life and give you a lot more options there if you're going to do that. Um, anyway, there you go, uh, SBUS versus CPVM, and why I say that you can, in fact, feel the difference. Happy flying.